guys welcome back to my channel so for today's video as you guys can see this video is going to be the long-awaited video that i have been promising you guys here on my channel for those of you who have been following along with the last three to four videos on my channel then you guys know that a lot has been going on and i have been promising a video basically summing up everything that's been going on with my goldfish butter who is a lemon head thai aranda goldfish that i've had for about a month now she has been very sick and I've recently treated her and so I wanted to make a all-inclusive video to show you guys how I treated her, everything that I learned, everything that I did, and basically just an all-around guide on how I treated her so that if you guys are having any similar issues with your fish, you guys will know how to treat them. Obviously, this video is going to probably be extremely long. I have so so much footage that I have filmed over the past two weeks of butter throughout her entire treatment. Obviously, I'm going to be explaining in detail every single step that I took and how I ultimately healed her of dropsy. So prepare. This video is going to be a lot of talking, a ton of clips of butter and her treatment, as well as a lot of information. So be prepared. If your fish has dropsy and that's how you found this video because you don't know what to do or what course of treatment to take, I just want to tell you, don't worry, stay calm. I'm going to do everything in my power to help you and I do wish you luck on your journey healing your fish. A couple of disclaimers before we get started. Obviously, number one, I am not an expert. I am not a fish expert or a vet. However, I have recently went through a very hard time with my goldfish. Obviously, this method I'm sure is not foolproof. I can't guarantee that every fish keeper who does this method will absolutely have success or that it will absolutely save your fish. However, I did catch her dropsy very fast. I had a lot of great success and so I'm hoping this video will help you in some way, shape, or form. I do want to remind you that while Butter is completely healed and her dropsy symptoms are completely gone and she is doing absolutely amazing and I obviously want to remind you guys that dropsy is something that not only is extremely fatal which I will go into more in detail about but it is also something that can reoccur and can come back. If your fish has ever been susceptible to dropsy and has shown those symptoms and even if you did treat it and it did heal like butter, it can come back. So that is something that you always have to keep in the back of your mind and then just take preventative measures to keep it from reoccurring. Okay, so a quick backstory. If you have not seen my previous videos talking about butter, how she came to get dropsy and what all happened, I will have those videos linked on the screen for you. But just to sum it up here, Basically, I got a lemon head tie aranda from a breeder called East Coast Ranch Hughes. She was shipped to me here at my home. I had a quarantine tank set up for her, but basically she was in quarantine, obviously to make sure she was healthy, to make sure that there was no underlying bacteria or parasites or any type of sicknesses or illnesses that she could possibly have that would want to show themselves due to the stress of quarantine. And unfortunately, that is probably what happened. Obviously, there's not any way to be 100% certain, but judging by what my vet said and the breeder as well, there's a very good possibility. And after 12 days in quarantine, her immune system more than likely was compromised to some extent. Bacteria potentially bloomed inside of her and it caused her to come down with dropsy. So what is dropsy? Dropsy is actually a symptom and there's a big misconception that dropsy is actually a disease itself. It's actually not a disease itself. A lot of people think of it that way and even talk about it that way, but it actually is just a symptom of a bigger underlying problem. Now exactly what causes dropsy is not exactly known. Even if you Google it, there isn't one reason why a fish will come down with dropsy. However, it is very, very common in goldfish, koi, and also betas. Uh, but of course, it can always affect lots of other fish as well. There are a lot of things that can cause dropsy. It really can be anything brought on by stress. There can also be internal failures like kidney failure, liver failures, as well as stress. There is even things like fish tuberculosis and all types of things that can actually cause dropsy. However, like I said, the two main causes that actually can be treated are bacterial and parasitic. Basically, dropsy is a symptom where a fish's body takes on fluid and it causes the fish to expand. That is actually the main symptom that Butter actually exhibited during her dropsy. Once your fish is ill and it does finally start to show symptoms of dropsy because a lot of times early stages of dropsy are really, really hard to detect and usually most people, especially fish keepers, don't catch it until they are in that pine cone stage, which is a direct symptom of kidney and liver failure. Once a fish's body can't expel fluid anymore and they can't can't process salt properly in the kidneys or liver, it basically causes the fish to expand and that is where you get that pine cone look. It almost looks like a pineapple to me. The organs are technically an organ failure and that is often what leads to loss of appetite, 
constipation, the fish being really lethargic, inactive, possibly laying on the bottom, and then basically it just goes on from there. There can also be lesions on the fish. They can lose scales. There's just a whole host of symptoms that can go along with dropsy. But the very first symptom that typically you will see will be lethargy, maybe loss of appetite, and then of course the pine coning. Of course, as with any sickness in your animals, especially fish, because they can go down so quickly, the quicker you catch dropsy and treat it, the better. Obviously, it's really hard to know exactly what's causing the dropsy, so treating your fish with antibiotics is usually the best first step, as well as salt, which we will get into. One thing that I found unanimously in all of my research when I was researching dropsy and what it was and its causes and things is that it is incredibly fatal to fish. It is extremely hard to cure, and now I realize that and I know that from experience, but it also has an extremely high mortality rate in fish. Sadly, I did see in a lot of my research that a lot of fish keepers whose fish come down with dropsy, they basically had the kind of same mentality of if your fish comes down with dropsy, it's extremely fatal and it's really hard to treat, so you should just euthanize your fish. I personally disagree with this sentiment. However, I can only speak for myself and my own personal standards for fish keeping and obviously I would never pass judgment on another fish keeper who's treating or deciding to not treat their sick fish. But for me personally, I will say that in all of my research and talking to everyone, seeing the high rate of people who decide to euthanize as soon as they see symptoms of dropsy was pretty alarming. However, I will say that because dropsy is so severe and fish do go down with it very quickly and treatment really is so hard and so, so severe and it is a lot of work, especially for the fact that you can't have a filter on the quarantine because of the antibiotics and things. I do think there is something to be said for the high mortality rate and perhaps lots of fish keepers euthanizing their fish without trying treatment. I do wanna give you some hope that if you do decide to go the root of treatment and you do follow all of my steps, I do believe that your fish would have a much greater chance of surviving if you choose to treat instead of just euthanizing and I just wanted to mention that. So to go back a little bit about how to catch dropsy really early and how I caught it in butter personally, again these are just my experiences but that's the best way that I can teach you guys or help you guys. So one of the first things that I actually noticed was a few of her scales actually lifted and one of them was really red and looked irritated. Obviously, I wasn't sure exactly what I was seeing. I am no expert, but just from the extensive research that I've done, which is a lot, I research a lot, <laughs> I'm very thorough with my research and all of my animals, so I knew that there was a potential that this looked like dropsy or could potentially turn into dropsy. So luckily, because I saw those few scales standing up, basically on the sides, right around her gill area, I immediately saw it, I was alarmed by it, and I decided to treat as if it were dropsy. I still decided to act on it, and obviously I'm really glad that I did. So the first thing that I actually did was, I actually added a little bit of aquarium salt into her quarantine tank, as well as I dosed it with General Cure. I am noticing a little bit of pine coning, as you can see right there, um, in butter. It's not a lot, but it's definitely noticeable. Um, I did a huge water change on this tank yesterday, so as you can see here, her nitrate is at 5, it's very low, and her ammonia is yellow, so it's basically zero. Um, she has really clean water, obviously it doesn't look that way, but I just dosed her tank with uh, two tablespoons of aquarium salt for a 10 gallon, and also I dosed her with General Cure. Um, I don't know if she has an internal parasite, but I definitely think she's got fluid buildup at the very least, um, but that's very, very concerning, and I'm really worried about her. God, I hope she's okay. Um, if she does have dropsy, which is my worst fear, or one of them for her, see how she's kind of at the top, and I have an aerator and a filter. She's got plenty of oxygen but she's at the top and that really worries me as well because she's been hanging out there a lot. So we are gonna be treating her for dropsy because that is my best guess and that's what I think that she could potentially have basically from a bacterial infection. Um, so we're treating her and we're gonna let her sit in this water basically. Since I just did the water change yesterday, she'll be okay for uh, 48 hours. You can definitely see the little bit of pine coning. It's not severe, but it's it's almost like it's starting, like maybe early signs of it, you see. Um, I know I'm not crazy. I know that something's going on with her. 
and I'm freaking terrified, guys. I'm freaking terrified. So, luckily, um, in all my research that I did before I even got a goldfish, I preemptively bought every medication that you can basically think of, um, basically to treat a goldfish. So, I already had general cure, I already had aquarium salt, and I've actually, I have Prizy Pro as well, which I'm not gonna do Prizy Pro, I'm just gonna do the general cure for now. Um, and I'm just going to basically keep an eye on her. The whole reason you quarantine fish for two weeks is so that you can make sure they don't have anything lying dormant. And then any type of stress or anything can trigger it to come out. And that's why you give them two weeks and no less. So obviously I'm extremely grateful that I've given her two weeks and that I'm watching her very closely. I watch her every single day. I have my really messy notebook from all the water changes I've spilled. Um, you can see here. I've took document of stringy poos, which is something else I've been noticing. Now that I'm, you know, seeing these symptoms, I'm treating because I don't want to wait uh, another day and it be something serious and me not know. So it's kind of treating her. It's not even preemptive at this point. It's, you know, straight up I see her scales raised. So now obviously looking back, General Cure probably wouldn't have been my medication of choice knowing that it was going to be full-blown dropsy. I will show you guys the other meds that I would suggest to you. However, because she did have one scale that was really red and actually a little bit bloody, treating with the aquarium salt was a really good idea. Two days with aquarium salt in her tank did clear that scale up, it healed, and then I was able to switch her over to Epsom salt, which we will get into. I also noticed that she was completely jaundice yellow. And I think I have some pictures and footage of that. Basically overnight, she had completely lost her lemon head as well as her white beautiful body scales. She was just a very jaundice yellow from head to tail. She was all one color and that was extremely alarming. And when I saw that, I knew immediately that it was dropsy. So Sunday night, because I saw that infected scale, I did go on an emergency overnight, Canaplex, Metroplex, and also Focus by Seachem. Those are some over-the-counter medications, which we're gonna talk a lot more about in a second. I knew from my research that those medicines would be the number one medicines to be able to combat it from all of my research and my own personal opinion. All right, so here is an update. Um, this is the day before Christmas Eve. It is day 12 of her being in quarantine. I've had her light off to kind of just relieve any stress that she could be feeling because I'm not sure what's causing her pale head as well as her pine coning a little bit um, which has me worried you guys can kind of see her scales protruding a little bit she seems to be handling the general cure and the salt just fine um, she's not panicking or gasping or anything like she seems fine with it um, i did feed her peas today and a little bit of pellets but i'm actually going to be done with the pellets um, she's only going to get peas tomorrow too um, just to make sure we keep her pooping really good and peas are really really good for goldfish Especially if they did have anything like dropsy or swim bladder or anything like that But her head is just so pale like literally it's as white as her body And so I called my local fish store. I also called another fish store and I also called my local pet co um, I did get multiple opinions and oh my baby. I love you um, they all said that they believe it's stress um, and then the general cure will help her if she does have anything and then I also um, ordered uh, Canaplex which should be here tomorrow I overnighted it even though it's gonna be Christmas Eve I don't care I overnighted it and I'm praying that it comes I really hope it gets here she's still eating and she's still doing okay she's obviously a little bit listless not like really bad but but if it is stress, then that could be why. Um, it could be what's causing all of this, which is very possible. But again, I don't know exactly what's stressing her out. I promise I'm doing everything that I possibly can to make sure that this isn't severe dropsy or anything. Just my luck is so bad, man. And I'm not crazy. Even Patrick noticed it. He's like, yeah, I see it. You know, it's, it's, it is obvious that she's got a little bit of something going on, especially with that pale, pale head. Hopefully tomorrow, I'm hoping her yellow comes back tomorrow or maybe the dropsy goes away. That would be great. Um, but I will update you guys. So fast forward to Monday, it was Christmas Eve. I obviously was worried being Christmas Eve that my packages would actually arrive. You never know what can happen. So I did make a trip to my local fish store and I did end up getting a box of Canaplex. 
that afternoon i did end up getting my package on time on christmas eve which also had the metroplex as well as focus which i didn't bring in here but you guys get the idea However, I didn't end up using the Focus because she never lost her appetite, so I never needed to use that as like a, a binding agent basically to boost her appetite and make sure the meds got in her. So one thing I saw a lot of online was conflicting opinions about salt and dropsy. A lot of people were like, if your fish has dropsy, make sure you're putting salt in there, which is true. However, aquarium salt is not the best salt to treat dropsy. Epsom salt is. Epsom salt is magnesium, so it's really good at pulling that fluid out of a fish's body. Whereas aquarium salt is really good at treating topical ailments like the infected scale, which is why I put it in there to begin with, as well as fin rot and things like that. There are so many amazing properties for aquarium salt. However, relieving fluid in a fish's body, the magnesium, also known as the Epsom salt, tends to work better. And so that is what I ended up using for the full 14 days. And again, I saw amazing results with that. So Monday night, I did dose with Epsom salt for the first time, as well as Canaplex. Now I did not dose with the Metro because I wanted to ease her into the antibiotics. I was honestly scared and I wasn't confident in double dosing her with both of them at the same time. I also at this time, being Christmas Eve, had not spoken to a vet. I had only talked to my fish store and they told me that I could use Canaplex. However, they were very hesitant about suggesting both of them together. So for Monday and Tuesday, I only dosed with Canaplex and Epsom salt into her quarantine tank. All right, so this is day two of butter and her dropsy. Um, as you can see, it's not any better. It looks like, if anything, it's a little bit worse, but it's not better. It's really hard to tell from day to day because I look at her so much, you know, like I see her so much. We are making an emergency trip to my fish store. It's about an hour away. Um, even though I overnighted, her Canaflex, I'm not taking any chances of it not coming. I had it overnighted and I'm gonna go buy it too, so. They close in a couple hours though, so I have to get going. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is a 100% water change on the tank and I'm gonna go on and put her in here while I do that. And then we are gonna be dosing the tank. I did get the medicine that we needed, so we're gonna start now. I just got done cleaning it out completely. The temperature is at almost 71, which is where it was whenever I took her out. Here is the Canaplex that we're gonna be dosing it with. We're gonna be looking at the dosage on this and then we're gonna be dosing the water. So here's the Canaplex. It is one level measure scoop per five gallons. So it is two of these per 10 gallon aquarium. And here is the emergency Canaplex that I had overnighted to me. Uh, I can't believe it actually made it, but just a couple hours too late, which is okay. At least it still came, but I'm glad that I went to the store and bought it um, because she's already dosed and she's been in the tank with the medicine for a little bit now, but it did eventually come. On Wednesday morning, the day after Christmas, I was able to contact my local veterinarian as well as the breeder of butter. They were able to give me lots of great advice on how I could proceed with treatment and they were also very helpful in telling me things that I didn't know, things I could do, and even tell me that some of the things I was already doing was gonna work and that was great. So I continued on doing some of the things that I was already doing as well as listening to their opinions and then forming my overall treatment that I carried out for the next two weeks. So obviously the vet did an over the phone consultation for me, which I was very grateful for because I couldn't exactly take butter into her and that would also be really, really stressful. She basically told me that more than likely it was either a parasite or a bacteria, which I already knew. However, she did reassure me. Also with my vet, we went over everything that I had done in the quarantine tank from the time that I got butter to the time that I contacted her. Basically, the vet wanted to rule out anything that I could potentially be doing. Because although I know that I did my research and I'm doing the best that I can and I was doing the absolute best that I could then, 
Obviously, humans make mistakes, and so obviously I wanted to hash out everything I had done so that she could tell me if there was anything that I was doing that she thought could have brought this on or anything like that so that I could correct it and then obviously improve my care going forward. However, after talking to the vet, she was pretty sure that it was bacterial or parasitic brought on by a lowered immune system. And because I had been doing water changes and I had actually kept a really detailed diary, I read my parameters to her. I told her that I had been checking my ammonia levels every two to three days. I've been doing water changes every three to four days. My vet did draw the conclusion that it probably wasn't anything that I did environmentally and it could have just very well been a fluke from stress. The vet did then recommend treatment. She recommended Canaplex, Metroplex, possibly an antiparasitic. However, Metroplex can also work as an antiparasitic. So basically Epsom salt, Canaplex and Metroplex were her main three things that she told me to use for treatment, which were three things that I already had in my supplies for treatment. So that worked out perfectly. I also talked to the breeder of Butter who also agreed with the vet. It was probably either bacterial or parasitic. Now the one thing that the breeder and the vet did differ on was courses of treatment in terms of routine. The vet wanted me to treat with Canaplex for three days, then do Epsom salt for three days, and then do Metroplex for three days. Now I'm not sure exactly why the vet wanted me to do that. I can only assume she was afraid that I would overload butter. However, I decided to go with the breeder suggestion, which was hit it hard all at once and basically go the full scale of treatment initially so that you could have a better chance at survival in the end. A lot of people online suggest dips with Epsom salt instead of adding Epsom straight to the tank. They'll do concentrated dips that a fish can only stay in for about 10 minutes or less. However, I felt that that was more stressful to butter by taking her out and forcing her into a salt dip and then putting her back. So I decided to do low doses of Epsom salt in the tank and that actually worked out a lot better in the long run for butter personally, but again, this is just my experience. That was the breeder's suggestion. She also suggested adding Canaplex and Metroplex into the tank at the same time. Okay, so here we have butter's tank. Um, I have her taken out into a bowl of water right now. Um, it is right now seven o'clock on Christmas night. Um, I have been watching Butter all day. Um, I even have a camera that I've had on her that I can watch her on my phone. Like I'm just so extremely worried about her. Um, so yeah, I have a camera. I actually did a 50% this morning, but her tank bacteria is completely dead. I would have done the full hundred, but it was Christmas morning and I had a lot I had to do. I wanted to give her at least eight hours after the 50% one, you know, like I didn't want to do them back to back. So I waited a few hours, but now that it's seven, we're going to be doing this water chain. I have every single type of fish medicine um, that I can possibly think of. Um, I've got Canaplex, Metroplex, Focuses. I have Epsom salt, unscented, urethromycin. I've got tank salts. Uh, aquarium salts, general cure. Um, basically, this is just my week-long plan of attack to heal her. All of these medicines are not going to be used. This is a process. Um, I have my notes here, my extensive notes of everything I've been doing with her. You guys have seen that. It's a mess, but I know what it says. I can read it. <laughs> I'm not giving up, and I'm desperate, and I want her healed. Okay guys, here we are. Somebody is in really good spirits, even though she's a little balloon. This is the day after Christmas, the 26th. Um, I'm sorry, I'm really tired. Um, she seems to be in really good spirits, but she's still really bloated and it doesn't appear to have gone down at all, but um, I know that these things can take time. Um, as you can see, the bottom of the tank is a disaster. She's been pooping really, really good, which is really, really good. Her organs are still functioning, um, even though she's having some obvious liver issues because of the bloat. Um, she seems to be in really, really good spirits and is swimming great and is active. And that's really all I can ask for, you know, until I figure out how to stop this. Today, we're gonna be doing a 100% water change pretty soon here. And then we're going to be medicating her again, and we're going to keep fighting. I am about to call the vet, um, my exotic vet right now, since it's not Christmas anymore. And I'm hoping that he can help me and see what he is, his advice is, and then 
I'll let you guys know in the next update. So the one thing that sucks the most about quarantine and treating with medicines is that if you use an antibiotic like Canaplex and Metroplex in a quarantine tank, it will kill your filter. So basically any good filter media and bacteria that you have in there, it will essentially kill it. So having a filter on your quarantine when you're dosing with antibiotics can sometimes be pointless. So I personally made the decision to take the filter off completely, which then resulted in daily water changes. Another thing that my breeder did suggest was aged water, and I'm really glad that she did. Aged water is essentially water that you've let sit out for a day or two, over 24 hours at least, which gives the water time to settle down. It prevents super saturation because during the winter time, because water from your pipes in your house and from your faucet can be so saturated with gas, everything in the water has time to balance and it also can release the chlorine and gases and things like that. So that was something that she suggested for butter and I decided to do that as well as part of my treatment and I'm really glad that I did. A few days into treatment and 100% water change was really, really grueling. I'm not gonna lie, water changes every day are severe. So Patrick had a really great idea basically, which went along with the aged water concept of basically filling two 18 gallon totes up with water, letting them sit for 24 hours. And then every day I could just take butter out of one and put her into the already set up medicated, aged, primed, heated other tote. So this did require me to have two totes and two heaters and then obviously refill it up, age it, medicate it, prime it and everything and have it ready to go. I did this every single day for two weeks. Okay, so here we are on the morning of day six of treatment. Um, she's still doing exactly the same, except she is in really good spirits. She's in better spirits today and yesterday than she has been in the beginning. Um, she's doing really good in her attitude and you know her activity. Um, she's been really active, still eating, still pooping great, um, just bloated. Um, and I'm hoping to get that down soon. Um, so her tank is a little cloudy because this water is about 18 hours old. So we're going to be taking her out of this and making some big changes. I went and bought two totes yesterday and set them up. These are 18 gallon totes. So they're a little bit less than 20 gallon, but it's fine. Um, they're a lot bigger than the 10 gallon. So I just treated these with salt and Canaplex, Metroplex, and a little bit of Prime. This is aged water. Um, it's 48 hours old. This one is 24 hours old. And then tomorrow she'll be moved out of this one to that one. And then I'll clean this one out, refill it up. And then she's just going to be going between these two for the remainder of her treatment. Um, and I think that's the best thing that I can do because um, taking her out of the 10 gallon to do the clean and everything and putting her in a bowl and all that is really stressful on her, I think. So we're changing things up. Patrick had this idea to just switch her between two totes that looked identical and I think that's probably the best um, thing I can do. So I'm also medicating her pellets with Metroplex a little bit. I wet them. I put a little Metroplex on them. I re-soak them and feed them to her. So that's what I'm doing here with the pellets. Okay, so here we have her new setup. Um, this is day seven, technically. Day six slash seven. Um, here we have kind of my station, which is what it's kind of turned into. As you can see here, I have two totes. I also got her a new air stone. You can kind of see it. It's a big one. Um, it's bigger than the other one. So I just wanted to push out more oxygen because these totes are bigger. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, as far as how is she doing, she looks the same to me. Um, she's still missing scale. She looks so rough, poor baby. Um, she looks really rough, but she's behaving perfectly, eating perfectly, and pooping perfectly. So I guess that's really all I can ask for. Um, Seven days into treatment, I'm very impressed that she's doing so well, even though she's still porcupine. That's really her only symptom. So we're doing the best we can, honestly. So you can see she's still porcupine. I don't know. <clears throat> I can't tell if she's improving any. Um, I just assume she isn't and that she's just kind of staying the same. So we're gonna be getting her out and moving her over to this tote now. So here we have two crushed peas and shelled organic peas, you can see. And then I have a tiny pinch of garlic. It's basically minced garlic and water is what I'm using just to boost her immune system. She's still eating really good, so the garlic isn't being used for that. But I heard that minced garlic is really good to build up their immunity. So 
I'm giving her just a little bit. She already had a few pellets this morning that were soaked in her Metro Medicine and then dried out. So she's already had medicated pellets. These have a little bit of Metro in them too. These were dried. I'm now rehydrating them after I've let them dry out from the Metro. And then, um, like I said, it's just two smashed peas also in the garlic, kind of just soaking it up in a little bit of tank water. So that is day six slash seven. So about five to seven days into treatment, I'm not gonna lie, I was very, very discouraged because I wasn't seeing any improvement in butter whatsoever. Now, butter wasn't getting worse, and I will say that. She never got lethargic, she never stopped pooping, she never lost her appetite, and she never became inactive. However, I wasn't seeing any improvement in her scales going down. In fact, I actually saw her losing scales more and more, and she was starting to look really janky and raggedy, that poor baby. She went through so much in this treatment. But she was losing scales and that was really alarming to me as well. But I knew it was just part of the process. And I think the hardest thing about treatment was remaining patient and giving the medications time to work. I definitely think that was one of the hardest things for me personally, like mentally to deal with, was not seeing improvement for over a week. However, I was happy that on day eight, she finally started showing signs of improvement and that really helped me to keep going and stay positive because it was really hard not seeing any improvement. But on day eight, I thought that I saw some of her scales starting to go down and I just can't tell you how happy I was. Okay guys, so here we are. This is technically day seven slash eight of treatment. I am so cautiously happy to say that butter is doing so much better. Um, technically, I guess today is day eight, but she's actually getting her lemon head back. As you can see, if you can kind of see, it's kind of hard. Um, I'll get down here. So her scales on her entire right side are laying down finally. And then half of her scales on the left are starting to lay down. She's getting her lemon head back and her body is finally turning back white. She's kind of been like a jaundice yellow for a while. There's her scales on the side, if you can see. She looks a little matted and ratty, but that's just because she's been losing scales like crazy because of all of this. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but there you go. You can kind of see how much better she's doing. So we're continuing treatment, obviously. Um, this is the tote she's been in for 24 hours. You can see the water difference. So we're gonna be moving her to this one after I get it heated. Um, this is aged 24 hour water. We're gonna put the heaters in there, let it heat up, and then we're gonna move her over. And that will be fine. But I am very cautiously optimistic because she's doing so well. We're gonna continue with the medicines. We still have about three to five more days of medicine allowance. So I think we're gonna ride these medicines out um, to their full uh, 10 to 14 day marks and then um, go from there. But as long as she's improving, I'm gonna keep dosing her with the meds and the salt um, until I reach at least the 10 to 14 day mark and then we'll go from there. But she's getting her lemon head back and her entire right side is almost down and healed. So I'm just, I could cry, honestly. Like, I can't believe it. I truly, truly did not think that I could cure something as serious as dropsy or the symptoms of dropsy. So the fact that she's doing so much better is just such a relief. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna heat this new tub and then we are gonna put her in there. By day 10 of treatment, Butter had gotten her lemon head back. She had gotten some of her white coloring back and her scales were starting to lay down. She wasn't 100% out of the woods, but she looked 100% better by day 10. Here are some of the before and afters of butter a couple of days into dropsy whenever I very first started treatment versus day 10 and almost week two. Okay, so today is day 11 of treatment for butter. You can see it's taken over my living room. Um, I did get butter a new tank and I actually got this stand off of Facebook from someone in my town. It was just like a $15 cheap stand. I just got it, I'm gonna paint it, it's whatever. Um, but it's strong enough to hold the tank, which is why I got it. Um, this is her tote she's been in for 24 hours. She's about to be moved to this one. They are both at 78 degrees. I have a heater in both and then I'm gonna be putting this heater over here to make sure this one gets up to 80 again. They usually fluctuate within two degrees, which is okay. 
so I am about to mix some prime in here and then I've got to do her medicines and her Epsom salt and I'll just mix it up in this little bowl here and then dump it in there and then we will be moving her over. She's doing really, really good. We also need to soak some of her pellets in her Metroplex, which we have here. This is her Metroplex and Canaplex. That's what we dose every day. Here's her security camera. And then you can see I've got this tote exactly at 78, which is also what this one is at. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of the water in here like that and then we put two I do two teaspoons it's a really low dose of salt but it's enough for me and it's what's been healing her so I know it's a really low dose I just didn't want to overload her on salt <laughs> my cat and then we're gonna dose her with the Metroplex and the Canaplex as well. And then we'll mix it all together and then we just dump it in there. And that's how I prepare the water every single day. And then we move everything out of this tote over here. Once we get her in there, we take this tote, dump it out, refill it back up. And then tomorrow it'll be aged 24 hour water and she can go back in there tomorrow. And after such a long grueling 10 days, I was so thrilled to see improvement and that she was responding to treatment and I'm just eternally grateful for the fact that the medications worked. Everything I was doing was working. So as far as how long I went on with treatment, the vet and the breeder suggested 10 to 14 days of treatment, depending on if she was responding to the treatments or not. Obviously not wanting to overdose her, I can't go beyond 14 days of treatment and I don't recommend that. Obviously every single situation and every fish is completely different. If your fish is showing signs of improvement after four or five days, you may not have to do a full 14 days of treatment. You can if you want to be safe. However, if you want to shorten the treatment to 10 days, that is completely up to you. So after the full 14 days of treatment and everything that I've already discussed with you guys, basically using the two totes, keeping the water 100% every single day, treating it with the Canaplex, Metroplex, Epsom salt, medicating the food with the Metroplex only, also garlic three times a week, keeping the temperatures at 80 degrees, making sure to have an aerator in there to make up for the oxygen loss from the higher temperatures, also maintaining her steady diet of soaked pellets with garlic three times a week, Metroplex on the pellets every single day, as well as keeping her bowels moving with the organic shelled peas every single day. That was the basis of her treatment for two weeks. After all of that was done and she was completely better at the end of two weeks, I then decided to lower her temperatures very slowly over the course of two days to get her back down to her now ambient temperature of about 72 degrees in her new quarantine tank. I did recently do a video of setting up butter in her new 20 gallon quarantine tank. I do have a filter on this tank now. The water changes are over and I could not be more thrilled. I was so excited. If you guys haven't seen that video where I set up butter in her new tank that she's in, I'll have that linked on the screen as well. But butter is doing amazing and she is absolutely loving that new 20 gallon and I'm really, really pleased with her progress. There are so many things that I learned through this process, but if I could go back and tell myself something at the beginning, um, I think I would tell myself to stay calm. Um, it is a very serious thing that can happen to a fish and it is extremely deadly. It is. It's extremely hard to treat. I know that and I'm sure after you guys saw all the footage of me treating butter for this entire two weeks, you guys know it was a very severe treatment that I will say even experienced fish keepers lose fish to dropsy. It is extremely hard to treat, but it isn't impossible. And I would say if your fish has dropsy and you're embarking on this treatment, stay positive, stay diligent, do your research and don't give up and hopefully you will see some success and your fish will respond to the treatment. So all in all, Butter is doing amazing now. She is 100% healed of the dropsy symptoms. I'm confident that hopefully the dropsy won't return and I treated the underlying cause of the dropsy. And even though I can't guarantee that it will never return, I'm just extremely grateful that these treatments worked. Butter's doing amazing. She is living her best life now. She looks so good. She got her lemon head back. And I'm just really grateful and staying really positive. And then of course, doing everything that I can to make sure that it doesn't return and I give her the best care possible that I possibly can. I can barely explain to you guys how stressed out I was over the two week treatment for Butter and this dropsy. I had a 
security camera on her. I was giving you guys updates on Instagram. I was doing her 100% water changes between totes every day and treating her. I was researching every day, trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. I mean, I did everything that I could and it paid off and I can never tell you guys how relieved I am now that she's doing so well and how grateful I am. But I do think that if I could do it, being as new as I am to getting back into the fish hobby after so many years, I know that you can do it. And I do wish you all the luck in the world if you are treating a fish for dropsy. The last thing I wanna say is thank you so much to everyone who reached out to me with advice and help and tips with Butter and her dropsy. Thank you to her breeder, Cynthia, for all of your advice and all of your correspondence throughout the two weeks. It really, really helped Butter a lot. Thank you to her vet. Thank you so much, Steph J, for reaching out to me. A lot of you guys actually went to Steph and was like, please help Lori and her fish butter. She's got dropsy just like lemon grab. And I really appreciate you guys reaching out to her. She did contact me in a comment on my video and she encouraged me to keep doing what I was doing. And it just really meant a lot to me. So I really appreciate Steph for that comment. And thank you guys so much for all of the help and love and support you guys have given me over the past two weeks. Seriously, I couldn't have done it without you. It just means so, so much. And the fact that Butter is now healed and she made it through and everything is good right now, I'm just eternally grateful and really, really appreciative. So yeah, that is everything that I wanted to put in this video. I think, I know this video is extremely long. So if you're still here and you're still watching, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in my next video. Be kind. Bye.